might notice my shack has changed a little bit. I moved my radio room from one end of my house clear to the other. And doing that, I had to upgrade my coax. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Can you? You see that big old chunky coax there now? <laughs> the antenna is now, well, straight line. Well, I don't know what straight line is. But in order to get from the antenna to my radio, I needed a minimum of 65 feet of coax. You can see on my screen, that's the antenna. It's a, uh, the Tram 1498, that uh, Dallas 347, uh, Needlebender 347. He gave me that antenna, oh, jeez, four or five years ago now. It's the only antenna that I've ever had that has been in the air for four or five years. Of all the other antennas, you know, if you watch this channel, you know I'm messing around with my antennas a lot. But on the house, I have tried a dozen different antennas, and that tram just seems to work the best on the house. I've tried flat side on my house. And for some reason, at least in the location where I have it, I get a lot of noise with flat side. So on the house, I've found that a ground plane works the best, and that's what I run here. Uh, down at my garage, I have a, a beam down there. And we're going to go down there, too, and we're going to test that antenna, because I also made some pretty major changes down there. We'll get into that one later when we go down there. But first, I'd like to introduce you to the Nano VNA. What is this? This is a Nano VNA-FV2 Vector Network Analyzer. Uh, my friends at Radio Oddities, uh, I had to convince them, but my friends at Radio Oddities sent this to me. Alright, let me bring you in close and uh, give you a little introduction, and we're going to get to some antenna testing. Uh, I'm also going to test my mobile antenna today. Even though I haven't made any changes to the car's antenna, and the radio still says that it has a flat match. I'm still going to test it anyway just because I want to see what the Nano VNA has to say about my mobile antenna. So we're going to test three antennas today. We're going to test that tram. Oh, I think I have a picture up of the other antenna. And we're going to test... <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you a sneak peek. Uh, the last you guys knew I had the uh, three element... Uh, Mako V-Quad up there. The V-Quad got hit by a turkey vulture. It's the second time this turkey vulture, I'm pretty sure it's the same one, I doubt two of them would do it, but it's the second time I've had a turkey vulture crash into my beam. Uh, the first time it was a three element Yagi and it crashed right into the reflector and bent the reflector in towards the uh, active element. And now this time, with the, the VQ3, it's got the three Vs, I, it, that's, well, I'm going to say the same bird, because I can't imagine there's two of them that are that dumb. But that bird <laughs> crashed into the side of the V and kinked it in. So the wire was droopy and the element was bent. I have since fixed the antenna. I replaced the bent uh, section. The antenna is ready to go back in the air, but it's going to be a while. Uh, what we were just talking about, where I was saying I have a lot of noise on the flat side on the house, I want to try that V-Quad because it's pretty quiet, but I'm going to make some changes. It's not going to get mounted where that antenna currently is. It's going to get moved over. But when I put that up, I will again be using this Nano VNA to tune the antenna in. But today we're just going to check my existing three antennas. All right, let me bring you in close. I know I already told you I was going to bring you in close, but now I really am. Let's come in close and take a quick look. I'll give you an introduction to it. Okay, in the package, we have the analyzer that comes with protective caps for the SMA female connectors on it. It comes with two pass-through cables. Uh, the ca these cables, you're going to need one of them for uh, calibrating the, the analyzer. These three items here are also for the calibration procedure, which the case that they supply with the analyzer has little homes for all of these items, so you don't lose them. But we have the, the pass-through cables. We have a cap that has no pin in it. We have a cap with a pin that's shorted directly to the cap. And then we have the load. And they also supply us with three different adapters 
and a stylus. <laughs> the adapters, I'm going to need one of the adapters because in order to connect this to my coax cables, I need an SO239. On the other end of my adapter, I have a female SMA. And that's the same as what's on the analyzer, so I can't just plug that in. So, I'm going to need one of the adapters that came with the analyzer. We are going to connect my adapter to their adapter and then connect it to port 1. Alright, first let's go uh, a little closer to that screen. And let's go over. When you first turn it on, it just... Information overload. There's so much going on on that screen. So we are going to go in first. We're going to be checking three antennas today, so we all we need is SWR and resistance. So we're going to shut off two of those traces. Shut off three, and we'll shut off two. Now we have... Let's go to... Trace zero... And we'll go back. And we go to format. And, oh, we're already on SWR. All right, so with the SWR on the yellow is, well, the yellow line is going to be our SWR. And if we go back, and we go back to trace again, and now highlight trace one, go back and go to format one more time, go to more. And more, you can see I have resistance highlighted. So trace two, or actually trace one, the second trace, well, it's labeled as trace one, is going to be our resistance. <laughs> well, I just changed all the settings, talked to the camera, and then realized after I finished changing all the settings that I forgot to press record on the camera. <laughs> so we're going to go back. <laughs> And I'm going to show you what I did. We go to stimulus in the menu. And then we have our start and stop frequencies. So the start frequency we're going to have. We're testing CB antennas. So we're going to go 27 megahertz. And then we're going to press that screen again to bring up that menu. And we're going to grab our stop frequency. And we're going to put in, oh, not 22, 28 megahertz. Now our analyzer starts at 27 megahertz and ends at 28 megahertz. Just did all the calibration and as you can see now we have they're all checked off. And when we go to done, we are going to save this configuration as configuration 2. So now every time I turn it on, all I have to do is go into the menu and go to recall save go to recall and number two so now with the analyzer is ready to start testing my antennas all right let's get to that and uh, hook up the first one we're in the house right now so I guess we're gonna check the house antenna first And that's the antenna we're going to check now. That's a Tram 1498. It's a halfway vertical with a ground plane on it. The ground plane is uh, four 48-inch fire stick antennas. It's four quarter-wave antennas as the ground plane. Now let's hook that thing up and see what the analyzer has to say about it. Remember, I just put new coax on that, so uh, <laughs> we're going to find out. So I have the analyzer connected to my Tram 1498, this, uh, my base station antenna on my house. And it's not too bad. Like I said, I just put new coax on that antenna. I just put LMR 400 on it and did not retune that antenna. Down at the bottom, well, down at the bottom, at the very bottom at 27 megahertz, we got an SWR of 1.34 and... <laughs> One of my cats just got too close to the other cat. I don't know if you heard that growl. <laughs> we have a resistance of 37 ohms. 
if we go to where I use the antenna, actually, let's just go first. I'm comfortable using anything, oh, 1.3 to 1.35 or so. Actually, we can use the, I can use from 27 megahertz up to, let's find out where that SWR is, 1.3. Well, we'll go to 1.35. At 27.710 megahertz, we have 1.35 and 65 ohms of resistance. That's interesting. The resistance is 15 ohms high at the top end and 15 ohms low at the bottom end. When you go to the middle where I use this antenna, where, where I use all my antennas, <laughs> who am I kidding? <laughs> I'm always in this area. We got 1.2 and 48 ohms of resistance. I'm pretty happy with that. I'd say it doesn't need any retuning. You just I have to drop it down. That antenna is not fun to drop down. So I dropped it down, replaced the coax, put it back up in the air, and it's still tuned pretty well. All right, let's go down to the shop now, and we're going to check the two-element Yagi that I just uh, recently installed on that building. Okay, we're down here at my garage now, and I have my uh, two-element Yagi, my homemade antenna, back up on the roof. Uh, after the turkey vulture crashed into the VQ3, I decided to put this up on the roof. Uh, this antenna will last forever. It's it's built like a tank. Uh, I've got a two inch boom on it. It's a uh, oh, what is it? Ninety two inches, I believe. What the spacing was between the elements. Uh, I got a dirty ballon on there. Got the uh, coax ballon and just a a rugged and rugged antenna. And I upgraded the mount for the active element. It's now on uh, two muffler clamps, two two-inch muffler clamps to an aluminum plate. And then I have the uh, the green. They're made for hydraulic lines, but uh, it was tough to find that size. That tubing in the center is inch and a quarter diameter. So to find those, uh, those plastic insulators, I had a, a little search for those. But now I have it. Uh, it's mounted where this antenna will just... <laughs> pretty much lasts forever it'll outlast that rotor I'm sure uh, the rotor is a fairly new one unfortunately I don't know if you can see it a little it's a little crooked see where the rotor attaches to the mast it looks like the previous owner of that rotor did a little custom grinding on the mount I didn't notice until after I put it up and I decided to just leave it that way it doesn't make the antenna crooked enough to be concerned you can't even really notice that the antenna is leaning that way just a smidge. One of the things I want to check when I have the analyzer hooked up to this antenna is you see right here, there's a light pole. And that light pole is grounded. There's a copper wire, I don't know, is it like a, a 10 gauge copper wire that runs from the top of that pole all the way into the ground. And the top of that pole is the same height as the boom of the antenna. And we have, when that thing is spun southwest, that pole is only about 25 feet away from the active element. So we're going to see with, with the analyzer, we'll see if that ground wire affects it 25 feet away. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty sure that usually when I put an antenna up, it's pointing west. Just because of laying it down the way the hinge setup is. Uh, so to the southwest, we're going to find out. All right, let's go in the garage and hook up to that antenna and let's use that new analyzer to see how good of a job I did building that two element Yagi. So we're down here in my garage now and as you can see I have this antenna tuned to the middle of the band. We're currently sitting on 27.500 megahertz and we have an SWR of 1.06 and 51 and a half ohms of resistance. I already spun the antenna around. It makes very little difference. It, it changes a little bit on the ends. Uh, the 
the lower part of 27 megahertz got a little bit better the resistance went up a little the SWR came down a little and this side uh, the SWR went up and the resistance also went up but I'm not gonna bore you it takes too long for that thing to spin around it didn't change much even when it was pointing at that light pole that's grounded it didn't change much so we have in the middle we're tuned really well let's drop that thing down oh went too far well actually we're gonna go down to the lowest area that I use on this setup uh, out here in my shop this is my sideband setup and uh, <laughs> I only use between channel 30 and no oh, probably channel 60 but on 30 we have a 1.8 to 1 SWR and 45 and a half ohms of resistance and if we go up whoop, went too far well even up at the top I'd still be comfortable talking to my friends in the UK the uh, UK 40 CB channels are uh, up at the top of 27 megahertz and we're not too bad up there and the resistance is a little high but it's still safe and we got a 1.35 to 1 SWR up at the top of 27 megahertz that is at 27.990 megahertz let's go down though because pretty much on a normal basis I don't really go over channel 60 like 62 we have 1.11 to one SWR and 55 ohms of resistance so right in the middle of what I use which is pretty much the middle of this scale oh wow that thing jumps come on get to the middle one more there we go right in the middle this antenna is pretty good 1.06 to 1 SWR and 51 and a half ohms of resistance Oh, I'm very happy with this antenna and that antenna is built e it's overkill. Oh, man I went overkill. There's even stainless steel sleeves at the end of the elements for uh, Where the coax hooks up to it. It just I went overkill on it But uh, this one I don't want to ever have to take it down again I'm gonna be putting a, a metal roof on this garage and I don't want to be slipping and sliding on a metal roof so this antenna is gonna stay permanently on this building and my house is gonna get the VQ3 alright I was gonna test the antenna in my car uh, but I'm just not gonna do that because I thought I had installed a test point in the coax the radio is mounted in the dashboard and in order to get to the coax connector I would have to pull the radio out of the dashboard and inside of that car right now is probably about 120 degrees uh, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in the car so unfortunately we're just checking my base station antennas today with this new Nano VNA Dash FV2 net Vector Network Analyzer. Thank you so much for my friends at Radio Oddity. Uh, this is a an awesome tool to have in your uh, collection. All right, guys. I guess I'm going to end the video here. I thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time, hopefully on the air. 73s.